I will do this the right way. You don't steep it for very long. It's not even steep yet. Right. All I'm doing is warming it, warming everything. Aha, uh -huh. I see. I see. Then, round two is when the. Yeah. This tea can actually steep ten times before it starts to lose flavor. Wow. Yeah. You bring this from China or from? Yeah, it's from China. So round one is just warming. Just warming. These guys really take their tea seriously. Yeah. And let's put this here. This is called an aroma cup. It's just for the aroma of the tea. So it's just a sniffer. Yes, yeah, just a sniffer. It's called a Wun Xiang Bei aroma cup. What you do is you make a seal between the cup and the aroma cup, and you turn it over. Mm. Yep, great. Then lift up the aroma cup and get the scent. And notice as it dries, the scent is going to change. There's a, there's a dimension of aroma underneath the surface one. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Then oh. enjoy. Then you enjoy the tea. Yeah. Delicious. Is that great? This is a new long. This is called Da Hong Pao, Big Red Robe. Because wow. it cured the one of the emperors of China of a disease. And in uh, gratitude, the emperor ordered that a piece of his imperial red robe be placed at the base of the tea tree in the Wuyi Mountains. So ever since that time it's been called Big Red Robe. <laughs> it's the same strain from yeah, and you can see the leaves are just beautiful. They haven't even opened up yet, so we're, we're not even really getting the flavor yet. This is just a hint, because those leaves are still closed. Uh -huh. yeah. Once they fully open up, then they release the, uh, the flavor. This is different from Japanese tea ceremony. Yeah. Japanese tea ceremony is more of an exact choreography, like, yeah. like a tai chi form. The Chinese tea ceremony, which is actually called gung fu tea, like gung fu the martial art, mm. gung fu just means, means you're perfected in a, in a skill. Right? Huh? Yeah, a good bus driver could have gung fu, see? Mm. Or a potter could have gung fu. This is gung fu tea, so it's oh. the skill of drinking tea. Mm -hmm. And the Chinese gung fu tea is designed more for the, the aesthetics and, and sensual experience. So, you know, what, how do you need to serve the tea so you can enjoy the tea pottery, get the wonderful flavor, get the aroma, feel the health benefits? They say for the essence of Chinese tea ceremony, and in a way, it's more like Chinese art of tea. Perhaps tea ceremony isn't even the right word. Yeah, it's not very it's the Chinese, yeah. No, it's the Chinese art of tea. And what you need for that is beautiful environment, uh, responsive and refined guests, great tea, which requires the good utensils, water, and everything else, and a poetic feeling. Huh. If you've got that, then you've got Chinese tea ceremony. Your business. It doesn't matter yeah. how many times you turn your cup. That's right, that's right. Wonderful. Let's have a little more so we can also actually, uh, well, I wanted to serve both of you. I wanted to serve the camera person tea also. <laughs> so for those of you who are watching, there is someone holding a camera <laughs> and there is another person helping. <laughs> and as someone serving tea, I don't like the idea that we're the only ones drinking tea. So afterwards, the camera people also get to have tea. Look, Everyone should enjoy everyone. tea. Everyone, this is a, this is a communal and, ceremony. And, oh yes, and there's no high or low in tea. No, I'm not any more the tea master than you are. In fact, if you study tea, you learn how to awaken your inner tea master. Uh -huh. Now let's see how the second steeping is. So we're going to again pour water into this e singware. This is a type of clay that's found only in China. The clay itself is called zisha, purple sand. At the bottom of the quarry, the clay color changes from brown to this beautiful red. So this is a rarer type of 
Yixing ware or purple sand clay because it's the red one. And by circling it a little bit, we can uh, distribute the flavor a little bit more. And then we pour it into this kind of decanter so that it doesn't oversteep. Because as you can see, the steeping time is very, very short. Yeah, so and for time's sake, we'll just, we'll only uh, sit here a short time. You could actually sit and drink tea through 10 steepings or more and it still won't lose flavor. If it's a good tea. So now we're going to do the, uh, the, the yeah, aroma. We're going to do the aroma cup again because I want you to sense the difference between the first steeping and the second. So we again put the tasting cup on top of the aroma cup and turn it over. Lift the aroma cup. You can just put the regular cup down for a moment and just get that wonderful scent. It's more pronounced this round. Yeah. And again, notice what happens as it dries. It's almost miraculous what occurs. Because the better the tea, the more dimensions of taste mm. and aroma. Mm. If with a poor tea, there's only a surface, only a surface aroma. Mm. With a better tea, there's one aroma and another and another, not only through steepings, but as the tea dries in the cup. The shape of this and the amount of surface area both tend to concentrate the aroma. That's amazing. It's Is that something? Now, it's now, it's got a depth, uh, like a floral depth yeah. that wasn't there. So sort of floral, maybe a little bit musky, mm -hmm. kind of burgundy tones. Maybe Bordeaux is better because the depth of it, more like a Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. You could get that much from, uh, from waiting on it. And you'll find the taste now is much uh, fuller.